Hey team, today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to wade waist deep into the Nefertiti skin color controversy, and we're going to solve this thing. So strap in, it's time to talk art. Are you ready? Grab a brush. Give me a hell! Give me a yeah! So here is the issue. Recently, a team of scientists used 3D imaging technology to map the mummified, the mummified face of Nefertiti. Then paleo artist Elizabeth Dane sculpted Nefertiti's face and then compared the two. And lo and behold, the image shown fits Nefertiti's face in the representation we have from antiquity. Said Danes, I worked closely with forensic paleo uh, paleontologists and anthropologists to determine accurate muscle, skin, and soft tissue depth. Everything was meticulously calculated by hand, end quote. Well, the people were not happy. Critics have lambasted the piece by saying it is whitewashing an African queen and not only is the skin color wrong, but the features are not African either. Well, as it goes for the features, we know from Egyptian art of the time, in fact, for most of Egypt's several thousand year history, that art was very precise and that the proportions and overall look of their highly stylized art, especially when it came to royalty, I mean, everything from the elongated arms, stiff poses, and rigid ideal frame to their, like in the Book of the Dead from the Judge and the shown here, that style was the form that Egyptian art took for very religious and symbolic reasons. They even had a grid that they used for centuries that showed the exact proportions to be used. It isn't that there weren't skilled artists who couldn't do any better than that. This was just the official state art style. The art required by priests who told the scribes what to write and draw. I mean, your afterlife depended on it. They were all pictographs, so they were all drawings. If, and if you had to look at Hunifer's judgment, you can see hierarchical figures and uh, hieroglyphics in the background, both being used. Well, as for the features, this statue was created by an Egyptian artist named Tutmos and was found in his workshop in Armana. Many historians and professors believe that this particular sculpture was used to give other artists a guide on how to create a Nefertiti bust of their own. Obviously, the queen couldn't be expected to sit for long hours for every artisan who was commissioned to create her face. Notice the wry smile? Quite a departure from the stoic faces of other Egyptian art figures. The left eye is unfinished, and many believe for the same reason as before. To start, you use the left side, and to end the sculpture and put the finishing touches on it, you reference the right side. Or the only right side was only visible. There is precedent for Egyptian sculpture to only have uh, one side being fully seen so that it was only finished on that side. But anyway, so we have the mummy, and we have the bone structure, and we have an artist who specializes in sculpting faces of long dead humans, and well... Guys, what can I say? Those are her features. The 3D scans match the face we know from Tutmos' workshop. So don't be angry at Nefertiti because she doesn't conform to preconceived notions about what people look like in certain regions thousands of years ago. I'm talking 1350-ish BC, guys. Over 3300 years ago. What can I say? Things change, and people do too. Whatever conclusion you have to grab hold of, that's fine. All I am positing is that Nefertiti did indeed have these facial features found from the Tutmos sculpture. Now let's take a look at the skin complexion, team. Straight up, in Egyptian art, Men were darker than women who were painted, for whatever reason, with a lighter complexion. Now the question then arises, is this how they look for real? For really reals? Or is this just a stylized ideal used to show the separation of the sexes? I think probably both. When looking at other art like this one of dancers and musicians, notice how the males are darker and the women are lighter. Same here in this bird hunting glimpse of the afterlife. The male is an idealized form, doing what he loves, and his wife and his daughter, who is between his legs, are lighter complected. Here we see the same type of tradition in a Minoan artwork showing two women carrying jugs and a male harp player. Notice how the art is very similar to Egyptian? So stylistically and in color theory, these are obviously influenced by the Egyptian art. Here's a larger picture of that. Here's an old kingdom princess. Notice how pale she is? Now the common thread in all these pieces of art is, they're all mostly idealized. They're all hierarchical and they all follow similar rules. Granted, Akhenaten broke some. Well, he broke a lot. But still, the forms are related and have a clear shared history. So in ancient Egypt, the women were always lighter complected than the males. This is the case of the famous Thutmose Nefertiti sculpture, and it's the case of Egyptian art. That's just how they did it. So why did they do it? <laughs> Great question. 
Could it be because women, especially the high-born royal women who could afford sculptures and paintings of themselves, didn't do much work out in the sun and were naturally more pale than their male counterparts who had to go out and train and ride and hunt? Huh? There is clear precedence in European culture, and you know, let's be honest, even in African and American black culture, lighter skin was seen as better, for whatever reason. That's just how it was historically. Or could it be a stylized way to show the purity of females, and the reverence they had for fertility? I mean, can obelisks be any more phallic? I don't think so. Maybe it's because in the afterlife, which is what the Book of the Dead were all about, basically, well actually, all most of Egyptian culture was all about the afterlife. The women in them are pale because it's an idealized version of what you'll be in the afterlife. If you look at the judgment of Hunifer, you'll see a dark-faced Hunifer, dog-faced Anubis, falcon-faced Horus, and the green-faced Osiris, who in the back of him are his, that's right, pale-faced female sisters, Isis and Nephthys. Nephthys. That, that one. So obviously facial complexion was important to the ancient Egyptians. Or could it be something else completely? In the end, we don't really know, so I think it is appropriate to keep to the original intent of Tutmos in the artists of the day, and not try to PC history. Just tell it how it is, and what the evidence shows. What do you all think? Let me know in the comments. As for me, I'm going to the house. For Studio 214, I'm Greg. Thanks for watching. <laughs>